Welcome back, everybody. Episode 2830, our second Cabral house call is about to kick off. I appreciate all of you tuning in. It really does mean the world to me. I love being able to do this show. Uh, it is my favorite thing to do. I love to teach. I've always loved to teach. And um, I, I don't even know like where that came from. But for me, it's trying to absorb as much knowledge as I can, not just from years ago, but on a daily basis. And then the want and the need, like it's a need inside of me to try to teach that. And so one of the best ways to teach it is literally just to take questions because at least I know it's it's at least hope, helping in some small way one other individual. So I appreciate you tuning in the show. If you want to read along with today's questions, head on over to stephencabral.com slash 2830. All right, let's see. John is up first and John says, hello. Thank you so much for all the great teaching and helpful and healing information. I've been listening for a couple of years now and I find your approach very balanced and inspiring. Thank you, John. Appreciate that. Uh, I'm 37 years old, 6'2", and weigh 213 pounds. I work my own business doing drywall and wear a Fitbit says that I'm usually doing 20,000 steps a day. I just started your Fatlocity program and I'm excited to see what it can do. I'm wondering with such a physical labor job, what is the balance to working out and resting? And what kind of macros such as protein grams should be my goal? According to my Renfo scale, my body fat is 29%. My BMR, basal metabolic rate, is 1815 and my BMI is 26.9, muscle mass 140 pounds, and has been uh, for some time. How do you lose the body fat and gain the muscle while working so hard every day? This is a great question. Okay, let's break this down. 6'2", 213 pounds, and let's say uh, out of that 20, 40, 60, minus that, minus 60, minus 200 would be 140, Okay, so I see where your Renfo scale is getting that at 140 pounds of muscle mass. Yeah, I would just say your overall lean mass, which is really what we're looking at, is probably more like 150 to 160. Okay, so I, I, I taught this just at the Reimagining Health Summit. I've said this many, many times, but there's a difference when you're looking at, so I, I teach this one line, right? I teach this one line, and the one line is, what are you trying to optimize for? Because if you're optimizing for longevity, obviously we want to get the body fat down, the BMI down, but we're not opti if we're optimizing for longevity, we're not exactly optimizing for body transformation. And I tell people this, but it's okay to optimize for body transformation for a certain period of time and then getting the body into the shape that you want it to and then transitioning more to longevity. So in John's case, I'm not giving medical advice or specific nutrition advice. I would look at getting about 150 or so grams of protein per day, which is a lot, right? That's a lot of protein, 150, 160 grams. So what does it look like? Well, for John, he's so active. I would probably look at three to four meals per day. And each one of those meals would have about 40 grams of protein per day. And then what I would do for John is I would really look at doing more of a nutrition plan that's eating between the hours of nine o'clock in the morning and five o'clock at night or 10 o'clock in the morning and then six o'clock at night at the latest, because I would want John to stop eating the more hours before midnight, the better, and then really tap into more of that fat loss. So obviously John doesn't need to do really any cardio because he's getting 20,000 steps a day. And what I would then recommend is I think your basal metabolic rate is, I mean, that's fine, 18, 15, but then think about all the calories you're burning every single day, right? So let's focus around the protein. Let's focus around, you're already doing this with a fat loss, a weight loss system, right? So you're already getting this. I'm sure you wrote in three months, no, two months ago. Okay, so you wrote in uh, nine weeks ago. So you already might be getting the results you want because the fat loss weight loss system teaches you this. We're gonna do lean protein, healthy fats, and vegetables. Then we're gonna transition in by adding in some healthy fruit. That's exactly what I want you to do. So follow the fat loss city weight loss system. But, um, and then you'll start to slowly add in back those carbs. So for right now, a little bit more protein, no starches, and then we start to add back in a little bit more of that. You're gonna do great. Like there's just no doubt about it. And then weight training, three times a week. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, to keep, to add muscle mass, to boost your metabolism. And those will be full body workouts for right now, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then you're getting so many steps in um, that maybe on the weekend you do a cardio day if you want, but that's up to you, all right? And then again, what you're doing now, your body's not static, you might change that a little bit in the future as well, all right? Thanks for writing in. Melissa's up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl, my IgG and IgM are low. 
So for anybody out there who doesn't know what that means, those are immunoglobulins, okay? So those are white blood cells. Are there common reasons for this? I recently did your minerals and metals test, and it said I have elevated levels of aluminum and mercury. Could this be contributing? Does being pregnant affect the mineral results at all? I also have mild scoliosis and was wondering if you knew anything about the internal side effects that are common for people who deal with this condition. Could this be contributing to my low immune system? I'm also wondering if there's anything I can do to excrete excess estrogen while pregnant or breastfeeding. I get I got melasma with my last breastfeeding uh, in pregnancy for 21 months. My melasma has gotten progressively worse. I know there's a lot you can't do to detox when pregnant. Thanks. Okay. So happy to help with this. Again, I can't give you any medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical cures, or medical diagnosis. That goes for anything on the Cabral concept. Your um, IgG and IgM are going to be run with your doctor. That's where you probably got them from. The heavy metals could be exacerbating a chronically inflamed condition and lowering those levels. It's possible. However, being pregnant can lower your IgG and IgM because your body is actually uh, modulating the immune system in its own way to, to be able to carry another life inside of your body, which is not yours without your body rejecting that. Okay. So like this is not abnormal. And then what I want to say is I don't believe the scoliosis would affect the immune system in any way, shape or form. It could affect the organs a little bit as they're moving, but typically not like a massive thing. But now keep in mind is you just have mild scoliosis and you can work on mild scoliosis with a good, uh, muscular conditioning specialist, a good maybe NASM certified personal trainer, a good yeah, overall muscular therapist can help with that for sure. There's just so much information on that. And then for melasma, the way that we typically help this is we improve the adrenals and we improve liver detoxification, boosting glutathione. And that's been really helpful for us. Now, all of these things, unfortunately, you would not do while pregnant. However, you can increase your, uh, we can add a little vitamin C, but you can also increase your uh, your cruciferous vegetable intake. That would be your broccoli, your cauliflower, your bok choy. Uh, what else? Cooked kale, uh, asparagus, and cruciferous vegetables, which would contain a little bit more sulforaphane could help you naturally then detox to a greater degree. All right. Thank you for writing in, Melissa. All the best to you and your new family. Hannah's coming up next. Hannah says, hi, Dr. Brawl. You're truly a lifesaver. With more space in the description, I'd go on to say more, but you and your team truly saved my life and I'm forever grateful. Thank you, Hannah. I appreciate hearing that. It's, it, it, I mean, this is why we do what we do. So uh, thank you. Thank you. Here's my question. I tried your heavy metal detox, but I always have reactions to large amounts of chlorella. I have some, I can have some in the daily fruit and vegetable blend, but the heavy metal detox sets me over the edge. All of your protocols are absolutely amazing, but sadly, I need a replacement for the heavy metal detox that doesn't use chlorella, chlorella, or at least smaller amounts. Does advanced TRS work as well as advertised? If you don't recommend that one, is there any others you'd suggest? Thank you so much. Okay, so it's not that TRS doesn't work. It's just that it's not very potent. That's all. So here's what I would do. Use the heavy metal detox protocol by Equalife. Now you can use another brand. I'm not saying that, but only use one out of the three capsules for the uh, heavy metal detox herbal product. Okay. So inside of that, you have the universal binder and you have the fluorophyll. So the other product with the herbal uh, formula, you can just use one at first. So it's lower amounts. Now keep in mind, is it a synergist? And it, cause you can actually be having a detox reaction, right? So just use one capsule, that's it. Then after two weeks of doing that, it will take you longer to do the protocol, but that's okay. Then try a second capsule or open it up and add a half a capsule, find out your upper limit, right? And at the same time, try doing infrared sauna. Okay. We have, um, all, all my resources for infrared sauna are at stephencabral.com slash resources. And you can also find the one over at Equal Life by going to equa.life um, or stephencabral.com slash Therisage, I think, for the Therisage 360+. Plus. And any discounts we have there as well for you. And then uh, you could try coffee enemas as well to cut down on those uh, detox reactions. Okay? So that's, a, I think, a good place to start. Uh, also increase your vitamin C. So the daily, immu so the immunity protocol as well. All these are at stephencabral.com slash shop if you want to check them out. Again, you can get them anywhere you want, but I'm just sharing with you what we do in our practice. 
Let's get another question or two. Lewis says, hi, Dr. Brawl. What would you recommend for a dysfunctional ileal sequel valve? I seem to have occasional pain or pressure on my lower right quadrant. Ileocecal release maneuvers and heated castor oil packs, which I use with DMSO cream, seems to help relieve the pain there. I've been diagnosed with dyspepsia by my GI doctor, and I seem to have SIBO-like symptoms. I've tried the CBO protocol, but it seems quite a bit of a stomach uh, difficulty, especially if I eat the wrong foods. I should mention that I had a parathyroidectomy about two months ago, if that's relevant. Is there anything you suggest, or would this require some surgery? Thank you. Okay, so I, again, I'm not giving you any medical advice. I recommend everything before surgery. So you can do, you can work with a muscular therapist or physical therapist, someone that specializes in ileocecal valve release. I would work on reducing stress since that's one of the major triggers. I would um, do the CBO protocol. However, you could do it at a lower dose. Maybe the dose is just too strong for you at this moment, but a lot, oftentimes there's a bacteria there, right? That can be causing this inflammation, which can keep open the ileocecal valve. All right, so for people watching this on video, and if you're watching on YouTube, we appreciate you to our growing community there. So if you look at the model right now at the bottom, so essentially your end of your small intestine, that's about 20, 21 feet or so. At the bottom, it connects, uh, the ileum connects to the cecum of the large intestine. So your large intestine is about five feet. That's called your colon. And there's a valve called your ileocecal valve. And it's meant to stay closed, except one processing move and mo food and moving that food from the small intestine to the large intestine. And it's meant to be a one-way valve so that the colon bacteria can't get into the small intestinal bacteria. Most people with ileocecal valve dysfunction have SIBO. I'm not diagnosing you with that, but they do. And so we need to do something like the CBO protocol to help to rebalance the gut. I can't recommend enough. Start at a smaller dosage, work with an IHP, and, and do what works for you. You can ease into it. So when a protocol doesn't work, it's not that the protocol doesn't work. It's not working for you at that moment of that dosage, but we know that it works. So what we need to do is use a smaller dose over a longer period of time, and that's okay as well. Again, the body's not static. Um, I believe it can heal, I believe everybody can heal, so we just need to work, work the process. And then working with a great integrative health practitioner can help you with this. And then keep doing everything else though. The castor oil packs are fantastic. Meditation, calming the body, uh, ileocecal valve release, all of those are fantastic. All right, let's get, let's get one more question. Uh, this one's from Lewis. Lewis says, hi, Dr. Paul. I wrote in yesterday regarding a dysfunctional ileocecal valve. Oh, Lewis is back. Uh, with pain and possible SIBO GI issues caused by it, I forgot to ask if a liver and gallbladder flush, flush would be advisable if the valve is impending uh, bowel flow. It would seem to me that such an issue could harm or hamper the elimination of gallstones. I have done eight over the course of about four years and still have poor elimination. The last elimination didn't yield that many gallstones. Could you please advise? I also take advise. I also take chlorophyll and peppermint oil. One last question. Sometimes I take enteric coated proteolytic enzymes as I've heard that such ileocecal valve issues can be caused uh, by scar tissue. I'm not sure if that's helping and sometimes notice the pills in my stool, especially when it's watery. Okay. Yeah. Happy to help here. It seems like Lewis, there's a lot going on in that gut. There's potentially a lot of inflammation. Uh, and with the slow elimination, I do believe that you need to keep that moving. That could be helped with the alkalizing vitamin C in the morning and the uh, calming magnesium before bed. Cause you want to keep that peristaltic, um, peristaltic movement going to get the bowels eliminating. The proteolytic enzymes can be fantastic. I don't have an issue with those. And there might be also low amount of stomach acid. If you're seeing undigested capsules, it typically does mean that there's not enough acid in the stomach. Again, I don't know uh, for you, but at least daily digestive enzymes could be quite helpful for this. And Lewis, if you were to run labs, I would run the big five, if possible, plus the bacteria and parasite stool test. If you're not able to run all of those, understood. You can run what's called the big three, which is the bacteria and parasite stool test. I definitely recommend that for you. Even if you only run one, I would run that one. Then there's the candida metabolic and vitamins test, which is an organic acids test. And then there's the IgG food sensitivity test. That's the big three. You can find all of those at stephencabal.com slash shop. Reason why I'm recommending this, Lewis, is that with complicated cases, we don't want to guess. 
where we want to actually figure out what is going on. And so that's what I recommend. You can work with my team and I, or you can work with an integrative health practitioner level two to go through these specific labs. Hopefully this was helpful. Thank you so much, everybody. I thank you. I appreciate you. And I'll be back tomorrow with our Mindset and Motivation Monday. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.